today we are with the representatives of the Citizen Foundation. They want to bring people to debate and prioritize innovative ideas. And since 2008, they have used uh, their own platform, Your Priorities, to promote online democratic debate in Iceland and worldwide. In 2011, they won the European e-democracy, electronic democracy awards. So thank you for, for being with us today, uh, Robert and Gunnar. Hey, good, good to see you as well. Thank you. Uh, so, to begin with, we want to know a bit more about you both, uh, about uh, who are you and why is it that you have been working on this topic and for how long and what were your original interests to working on the, on the concept of electronic democracy and democracy beyond representative procedures? Okay. Uh, yes, I'm uh, Gunnar Kimson and uh, since uh, since the, uh, when the Icelandic uh, economic and trust crash hit in 2008, uh, me and Robert, we got together. Robert was uh, working and living in London and I was living in Iceland. And we got together over the internet and just started discussing what we could do to, uh, to somehow help things out, to, to make things uh, better. And uh, we came to the uh, sort of conclusion that uh, the, uh, the issue of the lack of trust between the people and the governments and the, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the organization, the lack of trust between those uh, was the worst thing about the crash. It was even worse than the financial thing because you can't really build well up unless you have trust between the people and the institutions. So, we decided to uh, build open source software to try to connect those two groups of people together, those who are sort of in charge and whether they be voted or, or elected in or, or appointed or, or however they are, are chosen and the general public, the, uh, the voters, the citizens. And so we started doing the software to connect those together and that software is uh, your priorities, uh, which is a debate platform as well as an idea prioritiz prioritization platform and it is for example used in uh, in better Reykjavik here in the the capital of uh, Reykjavik Iceland to connect the uh, administration with the people and this is the underlying reason for everything that we have been doing is to find ways electronically over the internet to connect people with other people everywhere in the world or in their own community, just around the issues that are most dear to them. Okay, and how has been uh, by now your experience, how has been the, the traction of the website, the experience of making people to participate in this decision-making process in Iceland? Well, we've been, uh, uh, well, our first project in 2009, when the first website we launched in 2009 was uh, called Shadow Parliament. And it was still like uh, turbulent times in, in, in Iceland. And, and we thought that, uh, you know, we just put the website up and then everybody's going to come there and, uh, you know, it's going to be a big hit. And actually, you know, quite a few people came, some few, came some few hundred, but we realized that actually getting people to participate would be a bigger problem than we thought. Uh, and uh, so uh, what, what happened in 2010 is that uh, you know, about a week before the city elections in Reykjavik, uh, we offered all the political parties uh, that were running for the election, uh, uh, you know, a website on your priorities under the hat of Better Reykjavik. And uh, uh, so uh, only one of the, you know, parties, the best party actually started to use it. And they, they were sort of a joke party that was uh, not uh, sort of an anti-political, uh, you know, party. And, and they didn't really have any platform, like a policy platform uh, at that time. So their week before the election, they told everybody, and they were like polling 40% or something. So, so they were really like, they, they were in the spotlight of the media. So they basically told uh, everybody, as soon as we had opened the, you know, the websites, you know, told you know, people, go to this website, go to Better Reykjavik and help us, uh, you know, in, together create the, you know, policy platform, uh, uh, you know, for the next, uh, you know, city government. And so, uh, so uh, they then went on to win the election and, uh, and uh, uh, over, 
over 40 percent of the voters participated in this week before and after the after the election you know participated on the website and there was a big hit and a lot of the ideas uh, that that got a lot of support our website allow people to vote things up and down to create a list of priorities a lot of the high priority things were actually then sort of you know they became a part of the you know platform and were actually you know done so uh, so that, that, that was sort of our first sort of uh, you know sort of real experience of, uh, of sort of electronic democracy really working and considering this electronic platform um, make a um, junction between a direct junction between the population and the institution and power uh, how has been also the the reaction and the learning process of uh, maybe political parties uh, politicians and mainstream media by uh, understanding how these other uh, concepts of democracy work this is really different depending on project for example uh, uh, your priorities was used in a project called the People's Assembly in Estonia and there it was the president that asked the grassroots to come up with ideas to change their laws and, and maybe constitution and that went through your priorities and some of those have actually been uh, approved as laws in Estonia by now so that's one like sort of a simple I mean obviously the story is much more complicated than <clears throat> Probably some people didn't want to do it this way, but anyway, it's, it's like the sort of Estonian story, which is, yeah, there's more to it. But here in Reykjavik, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been working well, but it has not been working as well to develop it, to, uh, to learn from what we have done and do changes, and because the bureaucratic system is really... Uh, of the city because we're doing this in cooperation with the city and the bureaucracy is really although everyone is really wants this to work then just the system itself is really sticky and things move really really slowly in there and so in terms of working yeah it is working it's being used every day by people and at the end of every month uh, there's taking the top uh, ideas or or the issues and uh, from the website and, and feeding that into the uh, city and administration and some of those get approved and some get denied some are like hot potatoes that just go and jump in between and are sort of hard to get resolved but yeah it's working but it's not really sort of uh, developing as fast as, uh, as we would like it to be you have mentioned the case of Estonia. Uh, how has been the experience of the Citizen Foundation and the platform uh, in many other regions and countries in Europe? Well, I, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Estonian example is probably the most uh, uh, sort of you know successful one, but uh, uh, the platform has also been used in Bulgaria and in, in Greece and many and many other countries. UK. UK we're, we're doing a project with the National Health Service in the UK at the moment, giving.